we're happy to have with us today David George Coons. And uh, David is listed on the King County's touring arts roster as a storyteller. Um, also, since the 1970s, he's worked in communications, marketing, web content, and has written for newspapers, magazines, and technical publications. Recently, he's faced his fears and begun writing creatively. He writes a poem or prose piece each day and posts it on his blog at um, CyranoWriter.wordpress.com. David has performed improv poetry at the Seattle Art Museum and as part of Mimi Allen, the current Wordsworth Curators, um, Studies in Forgiveness program in front of McCall Hall. So, ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to lend your ears to David Coons. And if it's okay, I'd like to stand up to deliver this. Um, just by way of introduction, like most of you, I was very moved by President Obama's inauguration. But as a typical white suburban uh, guy just sitting there, I was thinking about my friends, uh, Asian Americans, African Americans, gay rights activists, Native Americans, um, who were actually on the mall celebrating. They were truly soldiers in the fight. They had stood shoulder to shoulder with the oppressed. Some of them had been oppressed. They'd gone through segregation. And I sat there and I thought, what am I bringing to the party? But because of President Obama's remarks, this is the poem that came out. It's actually, I retitled it. It's called Inauguration Day Revolution Revelation. I am a revolutionary. The words stare out from the page, though I've seen them in my mind before. Have I? I'm not sure. I've ridden and ride the Metro bus, not when it was dangerous, but when it was obnoxious. Not for civil rights, but for Earth's rights. I am a revolutionary. I've dug my hands deep, not into plantation soil, nor sharecropper's clay, but into the teeming, steaming, still hot, though on a winter's day at minus 20 degrees, compost heat that I first learned to keep at 10 and again at 30 to get my hands dirty. And now I know how to show younger folk how to pick up, that they may pick up that revolutionary yoke. I am a revolutionary, though not the great, great grandson of anyone who history would honor nor remember. Mine came across the water as well to seek a new life in a promised land a land of opportunity they sought out of their own choice. I follow that dream because I am the son of a father who has been to many mountaintops and rivers and marshes and forests and lakes and said, make no mistake, this is ours to preserve or eradicate. I am a revolutionary as the son of women who gave a hand up when that's all they could do, who, when others saw opportunity in times of greed, looked through with clarity and saw need and gave with charity. And even now within my soul, I guess, there is an inner vow I can do no less. I am a revolutionary. Lest there be any confusion, the earth, and its people are the roots of my revolution. Thank, Thank you, you very much. As we always do, we, we begin with Wordsworth, which is curated by A.K. Mimi Allen, who's also going to be reading today. So, Mimi, go ahead. Thank you. <clears throat> Den. Bird. Den. The burden of interconnectedness. The burden of glass. The burden of nutrition. The burden of hair. The burden of a car. the burden of a plant, the burden of hunger, 
the burden of family, the burden of society. the burden of small talk. The burden of good health. The burden of a conversation. The burden of an image. The burden of language. The burden of a dream. The burden of grass. The burden of history. The burden of burdens. Thank you. Thank you. We begin with Wordsworth, and uh, Mimi Ellen will uh, introduce our poet today. Our poet today is Aaron Silverberg. Aaron Silverberg is a biodiesel evangelist with a, and a recently married organic gardening bartering aficionado. He's looking for a publisher for his third collection of poetry, Cheese Flowers, and has two previous books that he would love you to buy. He's also a friend and a very sensitive poet in person. Aaron. Thank you, Mimi. Uh, for those who are following along on the paper, on this uh, quick edit, we're going to start in the middle of the poem and, and, and r roll around. So it's going to start at I'd Rather Be, Hurdling. I'd rather be chopping the vegetables, hands in the marinade, aroma of roasted vegetables announcing they're done. I'm paid richly by the in-betweens, my wife rubbing my head, the sudden panorama of the Olympic mountains, a small, restless child in Chaco Canyon Cafe making himself at home. Are you with me in this hustle of the day, making things happen? When I get home, there's that crazy calico rolling on her back in the driveway, lollygagging. It's a shame we have to be adults. So much responsibility. Just remember the dust motes rotating in a band of sunlight and how you stared at it. The smell of blueberry muffins, a thousand miles away. Thank you. Our poet today is Meredith Clark. Meredith Clark is the author of Residence, a chapbook built of postcards, and of a forthcoming chapbook about heirloom apples, both published as a part of the Ducey Collective before moving to Seattle in 2009, she spent two months at Art Farm, a residency in the cornfields of Nebraska, letter pressing a series of poems onto leaves from local trees. As the proprietor of Seattle's only mobile poem store, she has spent Sunday mornings in all kinds of weather crafting typewritten poetry on demand for Ballard market goers. She has been a reader and exhibitor at Pilot Books, a small press festival and is a participant in this year's EDGE program through Artist Trust. She holds a BA in writing from Oberlin College and an MFA in writing from the School of Art Institute of Chicago. Thank you. I would like to share with you today two poems from a seven part series entitled Land. Land One. Seven bolts in the wide white door. At no point is this yours to open. Take instead the passenger decks, one through three, hands on the wet rail, 
the frank and upturned face of the sea. After wave upon wave, a continent, wrench from your mind the thought of it. It remains. Land two. New pile of storm, I do not know. You like the form of everything so well. The surge, the foam, the coast of stones. You wash back out, you rock the bell. The net thrown across your face is built of wave and light. It throws the navigator into circles, turn again, turn right. Thank you very much. Our poet today is Monty Christopher Smith. He's a friend and resident at Tent City. Monty was born in the poor mountains of Appalachia, Virginia. A descendant of Noah Webster, Monty has traveled across the country climbing trees in some of our great national forests and eradicating cockroaches in the slums of Detroit. Monty was recently laid off as a CNC machinist, which suffered in the death of Detroit, and then moved to the Pacific Northwest, where he makes friends with all the homeless he meets. He's going to read a poem that's slightly different than the one that's in your packet, just to be warned. Thank you. Tent City. A song of Tent City. A song, a song of homeless. A song of poor America. A song of our cold, our cold mountain night. In a tarpulous town with a, within a great emerald city, we attempt to be American. An American homeless, poverty free. We gather sometimes to speak softly our plight, our homeless hopeful, weighing fight. We are many. Of many mixed races, weathered wet, worn faces, some of us so young, a song of an emerald's lost, someone's lost, unwanted son. A cry from a father, torn, from his Detroit children, you boys both, both are so far. A song of a mother, a homeless mother, and to a daughter of our nights, her fleeting hopeful midnight thoughts that sometimes force her to another sad reality of sleepless nights. We sing this song to you. To you, anyone who will listen, please hear. To Oz, maybe, if I dare say, in Oz, here in the city, this great American emerald city. We are here, us homeless, us people, we Americans, us sad children, men and women. We speak us homeless in irony, an American lady's forgotten spoken homeless stand. Give me your tired, your poor, she says your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse of your teeming shore send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp besides the golden door. But what door, we ask, us wretched, us poor? We have no door. As mostly we look down at our shoes, at our worn, muddy, our muddy damn shoes. Thank you. Thank you very much. We begin with uh, Wordsworth, curated by Mimi Allen, and Mimi's going to introduce our, our poet today, uh, Stephen Roxborough, who was kind enough to give me a copy of his new published book, which I see one of the quotes on the back was from Bart Baxter, who was the previous uh, Seattle poet, poet, populist. So, uh, but Mimi, you did the introductions. <laughs> this is my last one. Stephen Roxborough is a past member of the Washington Poets Association, co-founder of Burning Word Poetry Festival, and head poet from Adrona Center on Guaymas Island. Rox co-edited Radiant Dance of Being, a poetic portrait of Bill Bissett. 
and was twice nominated for the Pushcart Prize in 2003 and 2006. He's the author of six books and one CD. His newest collection, this wonderful, perpetual, beautiful, was published last month. Oh, dear Chief Seattle, thank you for selling us the land of your ancestors. Two million acres for $150,000. It must have seemed like a lot of money at the time. Oh, dear. Oh, dear Chief Seattle, at least you made a deal instead of a war you couldn't win. A senseless war that would have wiped out your people and your culture in a few weeks instead of... 50 years, oh dear, oh dear Chief Seattle. Now there's a beautiful city on the land of your ancestors with tall buildings like giant termite mounds that have eaten most of the trees and replaced them with hard black and white trails. So many trails, you'd go crazy to follow them all. So the white man invented the automobile to chase their tails faster and faster and further around until there are so many cars on the main trail at once they can't move and that we call rush hour. Oh dear, oh dear Chief Seattle. Now there are more people than birds living in a beautiful shining city with your name on it. Most of them happy to live here and work here and breathe the same air as your ancestors. Oh dear, oh dear. Many so happy to crave corporate logos and corporate donations. Oh dear, oh dear Chief Seattle. Your shining city full of many so happy riding on trails inside themselves. On and on they ride on strong drink and big smoke on unnatural powders and multicolored pills. They ride on the great merry-go-round of getting and spending, chasing the tail end of a dream, looking for a drop of sanity in the ocean of lunacy. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. They ride while surfing for a sustainable home on Google Earth and a bank account with enough dead presidents to run a political party for all those who stop chasing the wingless eagle spirit of the wounded American dream. Oh, dear. Oh, dear Chief Seattle. Where is our heart? Where is our will? Is there time enough left for the rest of us to wake up and remember? Never sell the past or the future. Never sell the past or the future. Oh dear, oh dear. Never ever sell out so much for so little again. Oh dear, oh dear, oh. Thank you, Stephen. I don't think I've ever uh, had a poem here in the council chambers that was so resonant. <laughs> Excellent. Very good.